You know, the Bible says, how do you know that you've passed from death to life? Because you love the brother. You know, when naturally speaking, it wouldn't be natural to drive 10, 11 hours to, to come to church. And, you know, people think we're crazy. But you know, I have a longing to be with my brother. Yes, we do. Yeah. I have a longing that that I can hear that good news from a far country. And we heard that good news last night. I would have traveled across this world just to feel just a little bit. Just to get a little crumb from last night. Oh, yeah. Worth it. You know, it's... It's... It's funny how life gets and and you would just go and we work and we do and we get tied up with everything that goes on and then then it seems like the old devil creeps in and says, well, you know, maybe you don't need to go to Lexington this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then I say, well, yeah, you're right. I've, I've got more things I have to do here and I've got to get to work and I can't do this and then... And then you get a little, a glimpse of sunshine. And you hear the, in the back of your mind saying, the Lord said, well, I've done this for you. You can't at least go. You can't just yeah. do this a little bit for me. Yeah. There you go. You know, I... It's strange how a boy from Miami, Florida can can find himself being acquainted with with a band of pilgrims that that has their life staked. You know, when Brother Billy was preaching last night about Ruth, it's, um, it's a beautiful love story. And that uh, brother Chris talked about that when we got married. And my wife and I, and it's always stuck to me that whether thou goest, thou go. And whether thou lodgest, thou lodge. And I want my, your people to be my people. But above all, I want your God to be my God. Yes, sir. And that's what I'm here today to proclaim is that I want your God to be my God. I want to be able to to get down and wash my brother's feet. And when this world says that that's not natural. But you know there's something supernatural. The Bible says that test the spirits and to see if they're of God or not. And I know sometimes you think that things are going just right and, and you feel like that it may be the Lord's will and He just pushes you to the side and gets you right back on track. You know, I've, I've told this a few times since I've been up, but I want to give God the glory. Like... Brother Robin spoke about today and that sweet sister last night did. You know, it's it's beautiful to hear the Lord's wonderful works and His mercies and His grace that He sets upon us. A few months ago, we uh, my father-in-law was in pretty bad shape and he had a pretty bad stroke. And I know sometimes we, we, we knock Facebook, but you know, it's, it, it's a good tool to get on there and ask for prayer. Yeah. 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 And you know, it's even the cell phones and text messages and just say, I'm just thinking about you, I need you to pray for me. And you know, I, I, know, that, I know that when the Lord 
lends his ears down and he hears us. Because when these doctors hear, they give up all hope. And that they they think that there's no more hope. They, no, but there was a campaign a few years ago that was going talking about hope and change. <coughs> I believe that one day I I reached that hope. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, it changed my life. Yes, it did. Mm-hmm. Yes, it did. And I'm thankful today that I can tell you that He is the reason for my hope. My father-in-law was laying in the hospital bed and there was no hope for him. And we thought that there was nothing else to do. We knew there was nothing else to do but to cry out ask for the Lord to have us And even though when you're raised up or you're in a family that has that goes to church all together and we all go to church in the same church and we're all there together, but still when you <clears throat> when you can call your uncle and we can kneel down and pray in the hospital room yeah. There's something to say about that. Yes, sir. And even though that this world can turn their back on him, when you get up from prayer and there's still people that have their hats off because they're on his chin. So when when you're in that area of the hospital, it's it's dire. It's 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 and we're not the only ones going food, it's all kinds of families that's in there. And you know that if you're there it's 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 bad. And if the Lord doesn't have mercy on any of them, He doesn't have mercy on us at all. It's, we have no hope. But in, those, in that situation, it's bad. And, and he was laying in that room, and wasn't responding or anything. And I was able to put my earphones in his ears while I was shaving him. And he started hearing some good news from heaven. And you could just see his body start to relax just a little bit. You know, when the Bible says that when Mary went to the garden and she wondered where they put his body. Yeah. And she thought she was speaking with the gardener. Yeah, buddy. But then he said, Mary. Yeah. yeah. Oh. She said, Master. Yes, sir, because she knew the voice. She knew that voice. Yes, sir. <laughs> she knew the voice of her master. Amen. And that day he knew the voice of his master. So I'm here today to tell you that if you hear the voice of your Master, harden not your heart. Today He's walking. Yeah. And it's all because of the prayers of the righteous. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Thank you, Lord. And I know that if it's His will that He can touch it. Mm-hmm. His will will be done either way. And we're we're a little selfish here, but we want to stay a little longer. But it'll be a sweet transition from nature to grace, and I and then we won't have to worry any longer about sorrow and pain and troubles. But the Bible says that now is the day of salvation. So I'm thankful that we don't have to go back and worry about anything that I've done in the past or anything else. The Bible says that now is the day of salvation. That's right. And if this is your first time hearing about my Master and it's His sweet name, Jesus, while you hear His voice, harden not your heart. You know, I... 
If you haven't been here today, he, he has afforded you a chance to come out. You may be hearing something for the first time. Listen to these brothers as they come. Uh, store it up in your hearts and think about it. Because you know, we're not... I'm not promised to be able to make it back down to Florida. We're not promised to get, to get out of this building or back on this highway. But you know, it's... You know, there was, there was some people a few weeks ago that went into a little church house to, to have a little meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure kind of like what we did last night in church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had no doubt yeah. that they were coming to serve the Master. And they had no doubt that just in a little bit that they were going to see Him. Face to face. <laughs> so consider, consider your case today. As these brothers sing, I love you. I'm thankful to be here for you. God bless you. Give us our